Shalom. Today we are continuing our study on the correlation between the Hebrew months of the calendar and the signs of the zodiac. It is written, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. And we do know that all around the world, people find pictures in the sky uh, made by the stars where, in fact, there are no pictures. I believe that God gave this for the seasons and the signs and what will be happening during that particular uh, month. Uh, we also know that the Gospels are written in the stars. I'm not discussing that. You can find that elsewhere. I do not advocate any kind of astrology. It is practiced in the modern sense. But we do have an interesting set of correspondences between the Hebrew months and the signs in the sky. So the seventh month in a uh, current Hebrew calendar is called Tishrei. This word does not appear anywhere in Tanakh, but one of the things that is written uh, is that the uh, world was created during the month of Tishrei, and the rabbis will take Bereshit sheet uh, in the beginning, these letters, and rearrange them to spell Betishrei Aleph on the first day of this month, of the seventh month. So it's an interesting idea that the world was created at this time. The seventh month is mentioned in Tanakh under the name Etanim, 1 Kings 8.2. And all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto King Solomon at the feast in the month of Etanim, which is the seventh month. Etan uh, comes from a root to mean to be strong or to be present or continuously flowing. And this is attached to the idea that this is the time for the rains to come. These rains that come in the seventh month are the former rain. They are the rain that breaks up the ground and uh, allows the farmer to plant an overwinter crop. If you have been doing this for any amount of time, you know all the festivals that occur in the seventh month. Leviticus 23:24. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath, a memorial blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. So this is Yom Truah, the day of the blowing of trumpets. And it uh, migrated to become the beginning of the year, the new year, after the people came out of Babylon. So a traditional Jewish person will refer to this as Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year. We've already seen that correspondence with Breshit and Tishrei Aleph. Leviticus 23:27. also on the 10th day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation unto you and you shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. This is Yom HaKippurim. It is always in the plural, the day of atonements, an English word, which is made up for the translation of the Bible. You can read about that somewhere else. The word Kippur, Kippurim, literally means a covering. In Leviticus 25.9 we read, Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement ye shall make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. So this is the beginning of the counting of the years of Jubilee, which are fifty years. And Leviticus 23, 34, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be a feast of tabernacles for seven days unto Yahweh, the festival of Sukkot, the festival of tabernacles. In the previous video in Elul, I talked about several reasons for sounding the shofar that are written throughout Scripture. We sound the shofar when we crown the king, and uh, during this time of these fall festivals, we expect the return of Yeshua. We sound the shofar for repentance, which we should certainly do before judgment comes. The shofar was sounded for the revelation at Sinai, and we can expect the return of God to the planet. 
The watchman's call. We are waiting with expectancy. The shofar is sounded for battle. We will see the connection to Armageddon. The binding of Isaac, which is remembering Passover and the ram that was slain and the coming out of Egypt. Remember that in every festival, it is a remembrance for the coming out of Egypt. You cannot start any walk with the Lord until you come out of Egypt, until you make a commitment to walk differently, not to walk in the ways of the world. The sound of the shofar arouses fear, which should inspire repentance. We hear the sound of the shofar on the day of judgment. Yeshua, he is a judge. The final ingathering is uh, the celebration of the Feast of Tabernacles. Those things go together. And the final resurrection of the dead is also related to the final ingathering. Just to bring a few scriptures for these ideas, the watchman's call waiting with expectancy. 1 Corinthians 1, 7 so that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah. This is a period of time for his return, and we wait with expectancy. Repentance should come before judgment. Zechariah 12.10 And I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look upon me, the one they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. The sound of battle, the readings for the intermediary days of Sukkot, in other words, not the first and last days, but the days that have come in between, which are regular weekdays, we read Ezekiel 38, 18 through 39, 16, which tells about the battle of Gog and Magog. The resurrection of the dead with the final ingathering, Acts 10, 42. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. Uh, this quick is an old English word that means uh, alive, living. It refers, uh, when they talk about a woman conceiving in her womb, that that is called the quickening. That's when that being comes to life. So the quick and the dead, in other words, the living and the dead will both be there. Second Timothy 4, 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Yeshua and the Messiah, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. At that time, Yeshua will be crowned king. This is another time where it's written that we sound the shofar. Revelation 19, 16. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Isaiah 45, 23. I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out from my mouth in righteousness and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Yes, this is an Old Testament scripture. Philippians 2, 19. That the name of Yeshua every knee should bow, of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. He will be the king, and he will be crowned at that time. He is also the judge. Isaiah 4, 11, 4. But with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. Again, this quick has to do with that it's uh, living and active. Revelation 19:15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. So we find that the astronomical sign 
for uh, the month of the seventh month is Libra and Libra is the scales, the balances. The Hebrew word is Moznaim, Leviticus 19.36, just balances, just weights, a just ephah, and a just hinge shall ye have. I am Yahweh your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. So when you put something in the balance, there should be nothing wrong with the mechanism that one side will go down when it should be equal and so forth. The things should measure evenly. Isaiah 40, 12, who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and meted out heaven with the span and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance. The creator is responsible for having created everything in a just way. Things balance out. Now the word Moznaim comes from this root Ozen, uh, Aleph Zion Nun, and it literally means ear. Genesis 35, 4. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand and all their earrings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. So this is your literal physical ear, a place where you could hang an earring. The root is also used as a verb, Deuteronomy 1.45, And ye returned and wept before Yahweh, but Yahweh would not hearken to your voice, nor give ear unto you. In other words, he is not going to listen. He is not going to use his physical ear for physical hearing. Now it's interesting that the word for balance comes from ears because there are uh, ears on either side of your head. And this makes it possible for you to hear in stereo, which makes it possible for you to hear where the sounds are coming from. So we should be a discerner to know where are the things that we are hearing coming from. Not only uh, voices that might try to speak uh, within our mind in our own voice and tell us to do things which we shouldn't do, or, or God's voice, we should be able to discern between this and that. And also when people speak to us, we should be able to discern where their voice is coming from. And as you know, the inner ear is responsible for your physical balance. So the idea of weighing things out fairly, keeping things in proper balance, this is related to, to the Libra, to the scales. We see that God will come and judge justly he will do things in proper balance. There is one place where this root is used to mean a weapon. Deuteronomy 23:13, And thou shalt have a paddle upon thy weapon, and it shall be, when thou wilt ease thyself abroad, thou shalt dig therewith, and shall turn back and cover that which cometh from thee. So it's uh, talking about an extra attachment to your weapon. Now what has a weapon to do with balance? Well, if you uh, know anything about swords, you need a properly balanced sword so that you can wield it effectively, that it will do what you purpose for it to do as you're using it, that it will strike the right place, not uh, be knocked out of your hand if it strikes something. So a perfectly balanced weapon is uh, very important. The weapon uh, reminds us that the war, there will be a war, that this sharp sword is coming out of Yeshua's mouth to slay his enemies. Another thing uh, we know about balance is you need a three-legged stool to sit. And you need three points to determine a flat plane so that your stool won't tip over. One of the things that we do read during Sukkot during the uh, intermediary Shabbat. If, when there's a Shabbat uh, in the course of that week that comes out, a, a normal weekly Shabbat, then we read Ecclesiastes, or some people read it on the eighth day, on Shemini Yatzeret. But Ecclesiastes is an important part of Sukkot in that it reminds us that life is temporary. 
Ecclesiastes 4.12. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So living our life in balance, having that three-legged uh, stool on, as our foundation, having that threefold cord as part of our life that helps us keep our life in balance. It's one of the things that we are going to reflect on as we uh, confront coming judgment, uh, our relationships with other people and with God, and how we live our lives. And I just want to talk about one other mention of the seventh month, which is in Genesis 8, 4. And the ark rested uh, in the seventh month on the 17th day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. And we know that the first month given, the month of the spring month, the month of Passover, was given to Moses uh, sometime in Exodus. And so we could make an assumption that before that happened, that the first month is the month that we're in now, in this month called Tishrei, that we say the seventh month, that in ancient days before Moses, this might have been the first month. And if that were true, then the month of Passover, the month of Aviv or Nisan, would be the seventh month. This is uh, interesting because the 17th day of that month is three days after the 14th day, which is the day of the sacrifice of the lambs, the day of the crucifixion, which means that Yeshua would have risen from the grave on the 17th day. And here we see the shadow of the ark resting on the seventh month, um, on the 17th day of that month. So that's just a little side note, something for you to think about. So to keep our lives in balance, we take the advice of Kohelet, of the preacher, the uh, in Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. I wish you a happy and meaningful seventh month as we celebrate these appointed times of Yahweh. And I pray that you would continue to keep your eyes on the sky. Your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.